the member for Moncrief. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise this evening, and it's my melancholy, melancholy duty to talk about the rushed and bungled way in which the Minister for the Arts, Peter Garrett, has completely mishandled the closure of the Australian National Academy of Music. Now, Mr Speaker, I rise tonight because of the Coalition's absolute commitment to making sure that these institutions of excellence, such as the Australian National Academy of Music, remain open as elite training institutions for some of Australia's best and brightest. And I say, Mr, De Mr. Speaker, that the Coalition remains steadfastly by those students and those staff who choose to study at the Australian National Academy of Music because we fundamentally believe that these kind of elite institutions have a place in Australian society not only to ensure that we showcase the best and brightest of Australian students to the world, but also to ensure that young Aussie kids have access to the very best that musical performance when it comes to classical performance can provide. And I've got to say, Mr Deputy Speaker, it's not a view that is held purely on this side of the House. Because I know there are members on the other side of the chamber, members of the government, who have broken ranks with the Minister on this very poor decision to close the National Academy of Music. And it's not only the Coalition that's worked up about this decision, Mr Deputy Speaker. It's also some 10,791 signatories on a petition, some 3,507 members of the ANAM Facebook support group. And there are 55 students and a number of staff and more than 60 students next year who have all been thrown onto the scrap heap by this bungled decision by a minister who simply does not care about the consequences of his actions. And the questions that need to be asked, Mr Deputy Speaker, is why, oh why, has the minister taken the decision that he's taken with respect to the axing of ANAM? Now let's revisit very briefly what's transpired. Let's revisit the way in which these students that have studied at ANAM this year and were due to study next year or to be enrolled next year, have been thrown on the scrap heap by a government that is insensitive to their needs and unwilling to listen to the very clear demands, not only of the student body, but of the entire classical music performance set in Australia. And I've got to say, Mr Deputy Speaker, the story is not compelling when it comes to supporting the Minister's case. Because we have a minister who's taken the decision to close one of Australia's best institutions without regard to the consequences. And more importantly, Mr Deputy Speaker, we have a minister who has yet to set foot in this chamber and explain the rationale for his decision. And in the same way to rub salt in the wound, a minister who has not even set foot in the halls of the Australian National Academy of Music. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, the questions that need to be answered by this minister, and I urge him to come into the House and to address these questions, is what conversation, if any, has taken place between the Minister's office and the Prime Minister's office? Because we know that the decision to transfer the Australian National Academy of Music to the University of Melbourne, strangely, Mr, Mr. Speaker, is somehow linked, we suspect, to the very close friendship between the Prime Minister and the University of Melbourne's Vice-Chancellor, Glyn Davis. We know they co-chair the 2020 summit, and I have been asking for weeks for the Minister to make this relationship clear and to explain whether or not the Prime Minister personally intervened in this decision. And this is the chamber to answer that question, and it's time that not only the opposition, but also, also those 11,000 nilly people that have signed the petition got an answer to those questions, because people are upset by this government's decision. And Mr Deputy S Mr Speaker, in addition to that, when we look at the rationale and the very haphazard way, and I must say, in my view, Mr Speaker, the Minister has not approached this decision in good faith, you would have to question the rationale for the closure. The Coalition remains committed to ANAM. We know that, for example, the current Artistic Director at ANAM, Brett Dean, won the 2009 Grave Mayer Award for his violin concerto. We know that there's a series of excellence, and in fact, Mr Speaker, you don't have to take my word for it. You can take the actual media release from the minister, released only days ago, in which he said, in discussion with the University of Melbourne and having heard the concerns of students of the academy, I am also pleased to announce today that the new music performance and training centre will retain the name Australian National Academy of Music with all its connotations of excellence. So, Mr Speaker, the question is, why has the minister done this? What relationship exists between the Prime Minister, the Minister and the University of Melbourne Vice-Chancellor Glyn Davis? Why won't the Minister come clean? And why won't those on the, on the government benches 
like the member for Melbourne Ports, like other members that are in the chamber this evening, stand up Order. for what they know is the right decision. Order. The honourable member's time has expired.